हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल माई नेम इज अशोक दिस वीडियो इज द पार्ट ऑफ एपेक्स फंडामेंटल सीरीज वेर इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट लिस्ट एंड कवर्ड ऑल द इम्पोर्टेंट लिस्ट मेथड्स विद प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल्स एंड टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सेट्स एंड विल ट्राई टू लर्न ऑल द सेट मेथड्स विद प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल्स सो इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी वर्स प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑन लिस्ट देन यू विल फाइंड सेट्स क्वाइट ईजी because both are the part of collections and have lots of similarities so if you have not watched list video till now then i would recommend you to watch that video first and you can find link in description okay and now let's start today's video with set definition so we can say sets are the unordered collection of elements that can contain or store only unique values it means if you want to store multiple values in single container and you want to make sure that values should be unique then we have to use sets instead of list so as per this definition set mainly has two characteristics first is uniqueness which means set only allow to store unique elements and if we try to add a duplicate element then set will ignore it for example let's say we are creating a number set with integer data type and providing these values including duplicates like 1 and 3 we are trying to add twice here but at run time these values will be ignored and if we'll check element size of this set then we will get 6 because only 6 unique elements we have here right and another characteristics we have no specific order so as we have discussed set is the unordered collection which means the elements in a set are not stored in any particular order or we can say elements can be stored in any order for example in memory for this number set 2 can be stored first then 4 and then maybe 5 I mean these elements can be added in memory in any order so while retrieving these elements order is not guaranteed and as like list here we can't access or work with items using index right so in nut shell we can say if you want to store multiple unique values in single container and elements order doesn't matter then set is the only option in apex okay and now let's see how to create new set in apex So if we talk about syntax to create new set then first we need to write set then in angle brackets we need to provide data type like what kind of data we want to store in it and here we can use any kind of data type which apex supports like integer string boolean list as object or any kind of data type and after that we need to provide set name which will be the identifier for set in program but as of now once we will run this code then value of this variable will be null because in apex default value is null for any kind of data type and if you want to use non primitive data type in apex then first we need to initialize them using new keyword right so this is the full syntax to create any kind of set in apex so once we initialize set using new keyword then memory will get allocated to this variable so we can perform all the operations to add or remove items all right and now let's see some examples how to declare a set in apex with different data types so with the same syntax first we have created a number set with integer data type and then we have created a name set with string data type so we can store unique names into this and next example we have how to create sets using as objects so here we have used contact object to create contact set so now this contact set can store only unique contacts and uniqueness will be calculated on field values okay and this is the example of how we can use list in set i mean how we can use list as a data type in set okay and now let's open our developer console and practically see how to declare and use sets in apex and here let's open execute anonymous window and here now let's first see how to declare a set so for example let's create a set to store numbers then as we have discussed first we need to write set then in angle brackets we need to provide data type so now we want to store numbers so we will take integer as data type here and after data type we need to provide set name so let's say we call it numbers and to initialize it we need to use new keyword then again set an integer okay so this is how we can declare a set in apex and now let's see how we can add items or elements in set so again here as like list we have multiple ways to add elements and all those ways are similar to list so let's see them one by one again so first way we have using constructor
okay so this is a while initializing the set we can also add elements under curly braces so while declaring and initializing the set if we already know what all values will be there in set then we can declare initialize and add elements in single statement right and now let's print this number set into debug logs so we can see what all values are stored in this all right now we can see only six values are stored in this set and we are trying to add eight elements here but one and three was duplicate here so at runtime set ignore those duplicate values and store only unique values so that's why we can see only six elements here and once we'll print this set in logs then all the elements will display in ascending order okay so this is how we can add items in set while initialization but now let's say we want to add more items after initialization then in that case we can use add method So here first we need to write set name. So in our case that is numbers. Then add and in parenthesis we can provide element value. So let's say we want to add six. And similarly, if you want to add more items, then you can use same code again and add more elements like seven. Okay. Now let's execute this code again and see what it will print. All right. Now we can see new elements here. It means if you want to add more items in set after initialization, then we can use add method. And now let's say we have a requirement to add multiple items at once, or we can say we need to add items from another list or set. In that case, we can use add all method. So to see add all method demo, let's declare another set with few values. Okay. So we have declared here another set that is numbers one, which contains four elements, five, four, eight, nine. And now let's say we want to add all these elements in numbers set. Then what we will do? We will use add all method. So again, we need to write here numbers, then add all. And here needs to provide another set or list as an input parameter. So in our case, that is numbers one. Okay, so now what this method will do? This method will try to add all the numbers one element into number set. So now let's execute this code and see what will happen. All right, now we can see at nine also here because these are the only unique elements for number set because five and four was already available, right? So if we have a requirement where we need to add multiple elements in set from a another set or list then we can use add all method okay so these are the available ways in apex to add elements in set and now let's see how to get elements from set so as we have already discussed in set definition that as like list elements doesn't assign any index number in set so if you want to get or use any individual item in set then that is not possible because set is unordered collection so values can store it anywhere in memory so index is not assigned to every element right and now if you want to get a particular element from set then that is not possible but using loops we can iterate over all the available elements in set so let me show you practically how we can read all the elements from set using loop Okay, so this is how using for this loop, we can iterate over all the available elements in set. And now let's execute this code. All right, so here you can see all the items in logs individually, and those are printed through the loop, right? So this is how we can iterate over all the available elements in set using for loop. And now let's see how to update elements in set. So again, we can't perform update operation over set because as we have discussed, we don't have index value assigned over elements. So we can't update value of any element in set. But if you want to see item is available or not in set, then that you can check using contents method. So for example, we want to know that six is added or not here in this set. Then we can check like this. 
numbers dot contents then element value that we want to check and let's print this in debug logs all right so contents method return a boolean response and if value is available then it will return true else it will return false so in our case it returns true because 6 is already available in set right and now let's see how we can remove elements from set so again here we have multiple ways to remove elements from set so first and very basic way we have remove method so if we have a requirement to remove single element from set then we will use remove method and again to use remove method first we need to write set name that is numbers in our case then dot remove and as a parameter we need to pass element value that we want to remove so let's say we want to remove 7 from this set so let's pass 7 here and print this set again all right now we can't see 7 here in new log which means 7 has been deleted from set right so if we have a requirement to remove single element from set then we can use remove method but now let's say we have a requirement to remove multiple elements at once then in that case we can use remove all method and in removal method we need to provide another set or list as input parameter and in that set or list we can add whatever elements we want to remove from set and pass as input parameter so now let's see this thing in practical and first let's declare a list and add some elements which we want to remove from set okay so here we have declared a list which contains three elements at four and three so let's say we want to remove these elements from number set then we can use remove all method and pass this list as input parameter and also we can declare set here but just for demo purpose i have used list and now let's use remove method and pass this list as input parameter all right now we can see those all elements has been removed from set like we can't see add four three here right so this is how we can use remove all method with set if you want to remove multiple elements okay and to remove multiple elements from set we have another method that is retain all So now let's say we have these much elements in this set but we want to remove all the elements except few elements then we can use retain all method. I mean retain all method help us to retain only required elements and remove all other elements. For example let's say we only want to have add 4 and 3 in this number set then what we will do we will use retain all method. So for now let me comment out this line. and here instead of remove all let's use retain all and see what will happen now all right now we can see only three values here why because retain all method will remove all the elements expect whatever we have provided as input okay so this is how we have multiple methods in set to remove elements and one more important method we have with set that is size so somewhere if you have a requirement where you want to know how many elements are available in set i mean you want to know the count of elements which are available in set then we can use size method so let me show you that here all right now you can see three here why because we have only three elements in set now right so this is how we have seen all the important methods in set and now let's collectively see these methods again in ppt 
सो फर्स्ट मेथड वी हैव ऐड विच कैन हेल्प एस टू एड न्यू एलिमेंट और आइटम इन सेट एंड इफ यू हैव रिक्वायरमेंट टू एड मल्टीपल एलिमेंट्स देन वी कैन यूज एड ऑल मेथड एंड हियर एज ए इनपुट वी नीड टू प्रोवाइड अनादर सेट और लिस्ट एंड कंटेंट मेथड कैन हेल्प एस टू नो वैल्यू इज अवेलेबल और नॉट इन सेट एंड सिमिलरली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेक मल्टीपल वैल्यूज लाइक ऑल दीज वैल्यूज आर अवेलेबल इन सेट और नॉट then we can use contents all method and here also we need to provide list or set as a input parameter and if you want to remove single element then we can use remove method and to remove multiple elements we can use remove all method and next we have retain all method which can help us to remove all the items except few so whatever items we don't want to remove those we can provide here as a set or list but if we have a requirement to remove all the items from set then we can use clear method and is empty method help us to know does set contain any element or not and size method will return the number of elements we have in set and clone method can help us to make a duplicate copy of set and two string method can help us to convert and return set items into comma separated string okay so these all are the important methods we have in set so now i hope you have fair idea about what is set and what all important methods we have in set and how we can use these methods in real time applications so that's it in this video where we have discussed about set and their important methods and if you have any kind of query or concern here then do let me know in the comments and if this video help you to learn anything new then please like this video and subscribe my youtube channel thank you for watching i will see you in next video